So I'm getting ready to pressure wash my driveway using a surface pressure cleaner. And I had a couple questions from individuals about what is the best way to start and shut off this Costco pressure washer. I know there's a newer version out there that has an idle control. Um, and I looked at it very closely and more or less, it's very similar to this one. So a lot of what I say here would also apply for the newer version that's on sale as of 2023. If you haven't seen my tips and tricks video, I'll leave the link to the description below where you can see it. Um, but this is just gonna be a general overview best practices of how you start and turn off your pressure washer. I also have a l bunch of great accessories that go along with this. So I'm gonna do a quick overview in a little bit about my accessories and kind of discuss about that. So let's go ahead and start with this first. So this pressure washer has been sitting in my shed. It's nice and cold right now, has not been used. And the first thing you wanna do before you start this pressure washer, you wanna make sure you got a garden hose with water. Now, one thing you're gonna notice is you're gonna see a little, a couple accessories are gonna be a little bit different because I've added them and I'm gonna, like I mentioned before, I'll show you what those accessories are later in the video. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you have your hoses connected so here I have my garden hose connected I have my pressure washer hose connected now that I have all the hoses connected I'm gonna make sure that water's running through so turn on water you always want to make sure you have water running through the pump if this engine runs for a significant amount of time without water running through the pump it will burn this pump out this pump has oil in it it gets really really hot and the way it cools itself down is just by using the same water that you're running through it as a pressure release valve over here so if you ever see water squirting out that's because your pump is overheating so you want to make sure you always have water running through the pump before you even start it now that i have water through it, I'm gonna go ahead and depress, make sure I get water coming out of the wand. Now that I make sure that water's coming out of the wand, you may wanna hold it down for a couple seconds, maybe 20 seconds, 15, 20 seconds, make sure you get any air bubbles out that may exist. Now that I verified, hey, I got water coming out, now you're gonna come over to the engine. Number one is to turn on, turn it on. Make sure your fuel is on now it's on and choke because it's cold you'll leave it here now you're going to go ahead and depress the wand with one hand and the other hand pull this a couple times but once it starts the engine will sputter up a little bit and this is where you'll come over here and move the choke over to four so i'm gonna go ahead and do this right now All right, so once you have your pressure washer running, um, then that, at that point in time, you can go ahead and put on your nozzle, start using it. Just make sure that, you know, if you take a pause, it's okay for the pressure washer to run for a few minutes while you're not depressing the water. However, if you need to take a really long pause to move things around, I strongly recommend that you shut off the engine. That way your pump does not overheat. All right, I know it's hard to hear me because we have this going on on blast. I'm gonna show you two ways to turn this off. So if you wanna turn it off just temporarily, quickly, this is what I recommend. You go ahead and shut it off from here. So that's a temporary way to shut it off if you plan on using it again. So if you wanna move something around, that's how you would shut it off. Now, this is where you gotta be a little cautious for is the choke. The way this choke works is if the engine is cold, you start it over here. When the engine is hot, is you start it over here. When you turn it off like this, sometimes you don't know how hot it is. You may have to leave it somewhere in the middle near the bottom if you are having trouble restarting the engine after a short pause. So that's one thing about these choke systems. If you're not familiar with it, again, down here, three is when it's a cold engine, four is when it's a hot engine, and sometimes you have to feather it a little bit in the middle when you're restarting the engine during pauses. Now, when you are done using this pressure washer, do not do what I just did. Now, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm gonna do it while this engine is off so you can hear me. But let's pretend that the engine is still fully running. It has not shut off, it's still running, it still has water coming through the nozzle and whatnot. What you wanna do is while the engine is running and you're ready to call it a day, you'll come over here, to the fuel shut off, you'll turn it off. You still have water through the hoses, it's still running, 
I would recommend you still depress the wand a little bit here and there, make sure that it cools off the pump and let itself die. It's gonna burn through the vast majority of the gasoline in the carburetor. And then you can go ahead, while it's off already, just go ahead and turn it off from over here. Uh, but that's what I strongly recommend on how you shut it off when you're ready to call it a day. Post edit Chris here. One thing I forgot to mention is once the machine is off, make sure you depress the hose to relieve any pressure. If you skip this step, you're gonna find that removing the hose is gonna be extremely difficult. Once you've relieved the pressure, it should be safe for you to remove the hoses. All right, let's talk about accessories. So one of the first accessories I got is for my garden hose. Now this is a flex garden hose. Um, Amazon sells a bunch of these. A couple years ago, these type of hoses did not fare very well. But throughout the past few years, they've done a lot of improvements. Um, they only used to last once a season. This is on my fourth season now with this flex hose. Uh, so it's just easy for me to store and put away into the garage. And what I like about these flex hoses, it has a little nozzle so you can open and close it so you're able to shut it off. Another modification that you may see is this right here and I'll leave the link in the description. This is our quick disconnects for the three quarter inch hose. Uh, so it has a female adapter here. This is what comes in and out. And over here, this, this is the male adapter. So this saves me a couple seconds. I'm just able to quickly connect this in and call it a day. Uh, so that's one accessory and as you can tell here, on my pressure hose, I also have the same thing. So this is another adapter I bought, and I'll leave the link in the description. This is a male adapter. It is smaller. You cannot use the same adapter. So this is a different adapter, uh, but I have that. So this is the pressure hose. This hose is rated for pressure washers. Uh, as you can tell here, I also put the adapter on both ends. So I have it here, then I also have it on the wand. So I'm able to quickly put this here, the other end, over here and just quickly connect it and disconnect it when I need it. You can still choose to leave it connected all the time, but I find it's very useful. And then the other thing is this hose here, this is not the standard factory hose. This is a 50 foot long hose. This is really good because sometimes I need to actually get to the second story of my house. Um, my house is tiered so I can get on the roof of my first story and pressure wash the second story and the other hose was way too short. So that having a 50 foot long hose, I'm able to get up there uh, and just pressure wash the whole second story of my house. So this is great. So here is another accessory I have that I find out, find very useful. Uh, these are extension poles. Uh, this is really good if you need to get to the second story and pressure wash up close. You can remain at ground level and then use this without having to dangerously use a ladder. Uh, so it can go up several feet. You just connect it to one another and you make it as short or as long as you want. So this is a really good accessory. Now, in addition to using it for second story, what I find very useful is when I'm doing pressure wash cleaning of the driveway. Here's a, a car chirp floor cleaner. This is really, really good in cleaning your driveway, making it really, really nice. The problem I have is with the stock wand, it is pretty short. So you're kind of hunched over and it hurts my lower back. So what I find very useful is I'll just use two poles, make it a little bit longer, just remove this and have two poles of this. I'm able to stand upright. So here's another accessory that I have. This is a short wand and a foamer. Um, so I got this also from Amazon. As you can tell, it's quick disconnect at the bottom, quick disconnect at the top. So I'm able to use this hose and quickly switch over to this new wand from the longer wand to the shorter one. And I have a foamer. So this foamer is really good for washing cars. Uh, you can buy different types of soaps that suits your needs. But this has been a really good accessory for me as well too. This surface cleaner is really, really good. I've had this about four years. Um, this look, box looks beat up because I've had this for a couple years. Um, Overall, these are all Amazon bought. I have no complaints. They've just been really, really good all around. Uh, so these are some accessories if you're interested.